All right, church. Listen, I am so thankful to God for this brand new series that we kicked off last week on the emotionally healthy church, right? Now, I'm praying, okay, and I want you guys to join me in praying that God would use this in a very powerful way, that this whole entire series will be something that God uses to transform our lives. Because I know that I need it, I know that you need it, and I know that we all need it. Amen, church? And so we're going to open up with a word of prayer and ask God to lead us once again in his word. And so let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before you to thank you first and foremost because you are God and there's none besides you. We are here to worship you, God. We are here to sing praises unto you. We're here to glorify your name. We're here to testify your goodness, testify about your faithfulness, Lord. We're here to declare that God is an awesome God. And so today, God, as we dive into your word, I pray that your Holy Spirit would begin to work in our hearts. Holy Spirit of God, we pray that you will come upon us, fill your people today. Father, I ask, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you will fill us with your spirit. God, that you would fill us here in person as well as those who are joining us online. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would open our hearts, that you would allow us to receive your word. God, that we would understand your word and that we would obey your word and that we would live out your word so that people might know that you are indeed God. And so thank you for how you would speak to each one of us. I do pray, Lord, that you would remove all distractions, God, from our hearts and minds, Lord. I pray that in the name of Jesus, Lord, you would take captive every thought in our minds and make it obedient to Christ. And that, Lord, we can focus on one thing, and that is you and you alone. We thank you for how you will speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, church. So today we're going to continue with our sermon series on the Emotionally Healthy Church, we're going to be looking beneath the surface, okay? We're going to dive deep below the iceberg of our lives, right? And we're going to need to, dis we're going to do this because we need to discover who we really are below the surface level. We need to discover who we are below the surface level. We need to cut through the layers upon layers of the false self. And discover who we really are. What we are trying to hide. Because we know that there are things we're hiding. We also know that, that this aspect of the false self is a, impacting our lives. It is affecting our lives as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is hindering us from growing in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is hindering us. Okay, And many of us, I believe, without a doubt, Many of us want to grow and mature as followers of Jesus, right? But we need to come to a realization, as author and pastor uh, Peter Kazara said, it is impossible for us to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature, okay? It's impossible, folks. We do it, but it's impossible to be considered spiritually mature if we remain emotionally emotionally immature. So truth is, guys, many of us, many of us lack self-awareness. Many of us lack self-awareness. We don't think much about the interior of our lives. We don't spend a whole lot of time pausing to reflect on what's going on deep down inside our hearts. Right? I love uh, how Pete Scazzaro says in his book, The Emotionally Healthy Church, right? I, I showed you guys these books, right? I'm using these both, both books to combine in the messages. And so in the Emotionally Healthy Church, he says this, right? He says, um, most Christians, I am afraid, are self-conscious but not self-aware. Does that sound like us? We're very self-conscious but we're very unaware of ourselves. We are more worried about what other people think of us than about wrestling with our feelings and motivation. So this is, this is fact, though, people. We care so much about what people think about us that we focus on that, we worry about that, than we do about the feelings 
that we should be wrestling with and the motivations that guide our lives. Remember the iceberg illustration? You guys remember that, right? Let's pull up that schematic again. See, I have to thank uh, High View uh, Church in uh, New Jersey for this credit to them for this uh, picture that I grabbed from uh, their website. So I forgot to bring up the clicker, but I wanted you to know, guys, the way we described this analogy of the iceberg last week was this, all right? The top, which is the tip of the iceberg, the visible part is the 10% that we see from the iceberg, right? That is the surface level. That's the surface level. It represents the 10% of what's visible to all of us, okay? Now, everybody sees the surface level. And we work so hard to present ourselves in a way that is presentable and likable, right? Since the surface level is what's visible to all, I would say to you that it's the easiest place for us to present the false self. Remember, we talked about the false self last week, right? This is the part that it's so easy for us to present the false self. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. Now, below the, uh, the waterline, right, is the iceberg that's known as the 90% below the iceberg, right? That's the 90%. And we know that the 90% below the surface level is what people do not see, right? This is the part that people don't see. We can call it the interior of our lives, if you would like. We can call it the interior of our lives, yeah. The things that are going, that are really going on deep down inside of us, that's the 90%. There are layers and upon layers in this 90%. The things that are hidden underneath the iceberg of our lives, that's the 90%. And then we think it's better for us to keep those things hidden because we don't want people to see that part of us. We don't. We really don't. It kind of reminds me of this television show that I used to watch very often when I was little. It was called The Incredible Hulk. Some of you guys, you know, probably are familiar with that show. Um, yeah, I know, I'm dating myself. So in this TV show, there was a very famous line that would often be said by Dr. David Banner. Do you guys know what that famous line is? This is what he says. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Because, you know, as soon as he's triggered and there's anger boiling inside of him, he starts to change into the incredible Hulk. So this is why I say that when we start to present that iceberg, below the iceberg part of ourselves, we know that people are not going to like that part of us. So what I'm, trying to, and what I'm trying to say is this, okay? Don't bring what's below the surface level up because people are not going to like what they see. So how does that look like for us? Let's, let's get real here, right? We're going to be honest. We're going to be honest. We're going to be t- uh, authentic. How does that look like for us? For some of us, it could look like this. Don't make me show you how jealous or envious I am of you. Don't make me show you how envious I am of you and your family of your accomplishments and the things that make you successful. Don't make me show that jealousy and envious part of me. Or somebody might say, you seem to have the perfect husband. Wish mine was like more like yours. You see what I'm, what I'm trying to say here? This is the below the surface part. Deep down inside, we're saying things like this. But we don't want, we don't want people to know about that, right? Or maybe this, as a parent, You might say something, oh, man, your kids seem to have it all together. They're excelling academically. They're going to the best colleges. And yet my child, he is struggling just to keep up his grades, right? So this is something deep deep down inside of us that's happening where we're actually bothered by other people's successes or accomplishments. We wish that we were like them. And what ends up happening is this, okay? We start to realize how jealous we are of other people, how envious we are of other people. Emotionally, there's something wrong with that. Instead of wanting what's best for other people, we start to want and focus on what we want as best for ourselves. It's so easy for us to do that. 
And so my question is very simple, guys. Who are we really underneath the iceberg? Who are we? Who are we? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. Are we the jealous person? Are we the kind of person that is insecure? Now, there's a lot of insecure people out there. I preached a little bit about that last year, right? Insecure people out there. That's below the surface, right? Do we try very hard to impress other people? That's something that I think all of us struggle. We try so hard to impress other people. Sometimes we try so hard to avoid conflict because we don't want people to know how we will respond in conflict. Just like the Incredible Hulk. You wouldn't like me if I'm angry. And so I love how Tim Lucas, lead pastor of Liquid Church, says it. Nobody knows the real you except you and God. Nobody knows the real you except you and God. Amen? Because only you know who you are. And God knows who you are. Other people see the surface level. Remember that, right? And so as you, as you begin to look beneath the surface level, you're going to feel very uncomfortable about yourself. We're going to see the true colors of who we are. We're going to be able to see and discover that we are jealous and envious people. We're going to realize that we always compare ourselves with other people. And then there's this part about motives, okay, that we haven't checked. There's a lot of motives that are not pleasing to God, our impure motives, okay. And I can assure you, many of us struggle with this impure motives, okay. We don't mean it, but we struggle with impure motives. These are the layers upon layers that keep us from maturing in Christ. And so I want to bring back that false self. Remember I mentioned to you last week what the false self is somewhat like. I was able to find uh, um, something from uh, Tim Lucas, which I want you guys to see. Let's bring up that slide, the false self. Here it goes, okay. The false self is the fearful part. The part that's so defensive when people start making comments about what you've said or things like that or, or maybe criticize you. The false self is about self-promoting. How about me? Uh, blame shifting. You ever done that before? Manipulative. Some of us are very manipulative. Even uh, children can be like that at a young age, right? People pleasing. We all struggle to some extent. We want people to like us, so we try to please them at all costs, right? We want to avoid weakness. We're not very self-aware. Well, this is the truth. This is the false self. Of course, he's only listing some of it. And I gather that he grabbed some of this from Pete Scazzaro's book, right? The Emotionally Healthy Church and Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. And so this is part of a false self that we have to deal with all the time. But we haven't gone there yet because some of us have yet to discover that this is really what we're struggling with. Why is this so important? I think it's so important for us to realize that this whole premise of emotionally healthy church is so important for us as believers in Jesus Christ. If we don't go below the surface level, we will remain emotionally immature, for sure. One of the reasons why I think it's so important for us as believers is that God wants us to uncover those layers. He wants to, us to uncover the layers upon layers, and to invite Christ below the surface in order to do a deeper work in us. And so it requires that we invite Jesus into it. You and I are not going to be able to solve this on our own because we've tried. We lived a whole life on the premise of the self, false self. God needs to do a work of transformation leading us to emotionally healthy spirituality in our lives. That's a loaded word. Emotionally healthy spirituality. God has to do that work of transformation. You see, church, God wants to change us. He wants change to take place from the inside out. And the inside is the below the surface. We really need to pay attention to that, folks. Second reason why I think it's so important for us as believers is because we don't often realize so many of us struggle emotionally because we've never dealt with issues in our lives. We never dealt with it. Even after we've become believers 
and devoted followers of Jesus Christ, we haven't dealt with the issues from our past. And you're like, okay, God has dealt with it. Absolutely he has. But you haven't really confronted those aspects of your life, right? Uh, I, I, I think of the story that Pete Scazzaro shared in his book, Emotionally Healthy Church. This is what he said, okay? And I think he's sharing from his own personal experience. This is says, for the first 17 years as a devoted follower of Christ, the emotional aspects or areas of my humanity largely remained untouched. Untouched. They were rarely talked about or touched on in Sunday school classes, small groups, or church setting. In fact, the phrase emotionally aspects or areas of my humanity seem to belong in a professional counselor's vocabulary, but not the church. You guys get what he's saying here? What he's saying essentially is this. In many ways, our discipleship models are not addressing the deeper issues of our emotional health. Okay? We can talk all we want about discipling this person and that person, but we are not hitting the deeper issues of our emotional health. Instead, we have relegated that aspect to the professional counselors. And I want you to know there is absolutely nothing wrong with professional counselors. In fact, I believe we need to have professional counselors that we seek out in our lives because we need their help as well. And so my issue is not with this, uh, you know, seeking professional help. My, my, my thing is going back to what Pete Scazzaro says, that we may not have touched the deeper levels, the deeper issues in our lives because we have relegated it to the outside professional help. And if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. But then you know what? But what if, what if I were to tell you that God wants to go beneath the surface level and he has provided us the tools, the tools and the means for his church to address the areas of our lives that need addressing, that involve the emotions that are below the surface level. What if God has given us the tools and the means to do so? Would we go there? Will we have the courage to go there? Another reason why I think it's so important for the church, the believers in Jesus Christ, to understand this whole thing is that God does not want us to live out of our false self. God does not want us to live out of our false self. He doesn't. He doesn't want us to be a fake. You where, where on the surface level we seem to have it all together that everybody could see, but sadly the interior of our lives are falling apart. You think that's what God wants from us as believers? Absolutely not. This is not God's calling for our lives. And I believe that this is what has happened to so many people. Christian leaders, pastors everywhere have struggled in this respect. And they have never gone there to address that matter. You see, guys, it is so easy for you and I to put, up this, put on the false self. But it's so hard for us to be authentic. We find it so hard to show the real us. Because we all want to be liked. Who does not want to be liked? Who does not want to be accepted? There's not a single person in this room or tuning in online that does not want to be liked. No one wants to be hated. No one wants to be disliked. We want to be accepted all the time. In fact, in the school, we're always trying our best to make people accept us so, to, so that we can feel a sense of belonging. We do all these kinds of things to get people's approval, even if it means for us to be unauthentic. That's what we do, folks. And the reality is that this is a battle that you and I face every day. This is a battle. We got to choose to not live out of our false self. Do we want to live this authentic life that God has for us, or do we want to live the lie? Which one? God is going to call us to account, right? I would dare say to you that so many of us operate out of the false self. Because we don't want to deal with rejection. We don't want to deal with rejection. We don't want to uh, deal with disappointment from people. So we, we feel so much more comfortable uh, putting up the false self. 
God is saying us to, to us today, folks. God is saying to his church today, no, my child, no, this is not what I want you to live. This is not what I have for you. Tim Lucas said it so well. He says, what the world needs, what, what we need, what is needed is the real you created in Christ. We need the real you. The whole world needs the real you. Our church needs the real you. We need you alive and anchored in the love of God so the world will see God's glory. Amen. We need the world to see God's glory in his people. So we need the real you. You see, our Lord died on the cross. He shed his precious blood in order to pay for our sins. We all know this. This is the gospel truth. The Lord Jesus died on the cross and he shed that precious blood in order to redeem us from the brokenness, in order to restore us to the true self, the new us created in Christ Jesus. We no longer have to live in the bondage of falsehood. When we live out of the freedom that Christ offers us, church, we no longer have to live in bondage. This is God's promise to his people. And so how we're going to do this the right way, folks, here comes the, the practical aspect of application. How we are going to do this in the right way. Well, it starts with the false self being, having to be crucified in Christ. We need the false self to be crucified in Christ. Because God did not create us to live out of the falseness of ourselves. So we're going to turn to a, a familiar passage to us all, taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Some of you guys are familiar with this. The Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. This is believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning of the chapter 4, he addresses uh, unity in the body of Christ. Unity in the church, right? He does a fantastic job outlining what that looks like, what is expected of his people. And so then he moves on to the to next part in the section that we are going to be reading from. And that is beginning with verse 20. But just before that, he's reminding these believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's reminding them and, 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 and kind of like um, reassuring them, listen, guys, right? You are no longer to live like the way you used to anymore, right? I, I might as well just read it, okay? I'm just going to read it from verse 17. This is what he says. So I tell you and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given over themselves, uh, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. Wow. This is, this, this is Apostle Paul saying to believers, like, guys, listen, man. You got to stop going back there. You got to stop going back to those old ways. Then he goes on to say, he says, beginning with verse 20, you, again, however, did not come to know Christ. You see, these are believers. He said, you did not come to know Christ in that way. Surely you have heard of him and were taught with regards to the former way of life to put off your old self. This is in reference to who we were prior coming to faith in Christ, your old self. Put it off, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Remember, the old self has a lot of baggage, deceitful desires, okay? To be made new in the attitude of your minds. Your minds have to begin to be renewed in Christ and to put on the new self. New self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. I'm just going to read one more verse. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor for we are all members of one body. Man, if that doesn't make it clear to you and I, I don't know what else would. This is what Paul is saying to us, okay? First thing we need to really acknowledge is this. The old self must be crucified. That old self has the false self within it. All right? The old self wants to stay 
comfortable in the false self. We are called to crucify it. This is where you have to put it off. Okay? You're called to put it off. We need to nail it to the cross. Some of us are like, what do you mean by nail it to the cross? You know what? You got to get rid of that. There, if there's something happening that is like eating uh, you up, you got to get rid of it. You got to get rid of this old, old self, this false self, and begin to do what God wants you to do in your life. So, number two, we need to begin asking ourselves, what lies are we still believing? What lies are you believing? What lies are you still subscribing to right now, today? The kind of lies that you were struggling with all your life. Maybe there are lies that have been spoken over you. Maybe there are lies that, uh, uh, that you've been convinced that if I only could impress them in a certain way, then I'll be accepted by them. What lies are you still believing? The third thing is, whose approval am I seeking? How many of us are still seeking approval? Some of us are like, yeah, I always want my uh, parents' approval. I always want my boss's approval. I always want my friend's approval. You see, we're seeking for approval from everywhere else but God. Right? And so, it's really what if you think about it, what really matters is God's approval. And he has given us his approval. He has given us his approval. Right? He, 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 he has loved us enough to die for us and given us this new life. That's approval. Right? And so what, what secrets am I still burying? There's secrets that we want nobody to know about. We are still have these secrets buried somewhere. And so the Apostle Paul is reminding the believers in, in the the church of Ephesus, listen, church, don't go back to your former way. Do not get stuck on the cycle of just going back to your former self. Do not. Stop being deceived by the lies that you've been told. This is action point, folks. This is something that God is calling his people to act on. Stop believing those lies. If you've been told certain things about what you're not able to do, stop believing in God. Because he created you so special and so gifted and so equipped to do what he calls you to do. And so if people are doubting you, just tell them, I believe God has a plan and purpose for my life. And I believe that he has gifted me to do the work that he has for me. Don't, don't doubt yourself. Believe in God. He has great things in store for us. So stop believing the lies. Stop believing uh, the lies that may have been spoken over you. I, I preached about this a long time ago. When, when I was told as a child, you're going to amount to nothing. Man, I, I used to believe those lies until I came to a realization. Those are lies from the enemy spoken through people that were very close to me. Yet, I realized that they're lies. Okay? God has not made me to be nothing. He's made me in the image of himself. Value, worth so much. And we got to stop telling lies, folks. That means that this false self has to go. Because you don't want to lie to people because if you're, the interior of your life is falling apart, but in, on the surface level, in front of everybody, you, like everything is fine. You're lying to people. You're lying to yourself. You got to get rid of that lie. Stop faking it until you make it. So it's time to take off the false self. It's time to strip away every layer, every layer of the old self. And go deep, go deep below the iceberg and invite Jesus to do a work of renovation. This is the true self that you and I are created in Christ Jesus. The true self is to live out of our relationship. The true self. Putting on the, true, uh, the new self is what the Apostle Paul said, to be made anew in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God, like, like God. In, in other words, this is how God is like in true righteousness and holiness. True righteousness and holiness. It's not like trying to be pious and all but living in the truth of God, not having to pretend. When things are not well, let's get real with ourselves, right? 
God is calling his children to live out of our true selves. This is a process, guys. This is a real process in our lives. This process might involve sanctification, which is when the Holy Spirit of God begins to do a work in us, right? It's a day-by-day experience for us because we need a sanctification to take place. We need God's work in us, the holiness of God to be developed. We have to allow him. You see, we have trouble allowing God to have access in the rooms of our heart. We talked about that last week, remember? We have trouble allowing God to have access because we don't want him to enter those rooms. We're still holding on to that. But today, my brothers and sisters, I'm telling you right now, you need to give access to the Lord. You need to invite him into those rooms and do a renovation. You need to invite him to do a cleanup work in you. But you have to admit that you are in need of him. You are in so desperately in need of the Lord to do a work of transformation. What Tim Lucas says in um, one of his messages is that we all need a firsthand experience of living out of a relationship with God. How many of you guys have this relationship with God? I know many of you guys do have it. But we need to start living out of that relationship. Not just talk about it on a Sunday. Not just go and, and, and talk about I go to church. This is not about that. It's about you living out of that relationship. Having that time with the Lord on a day-to-day basis. Because I want to just close with this quote. Uh, this is a powerful word from uh, Pastor Tim Lucas from Liquid Church. I, 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 just, I was so encouraged when he said that. This is what, what he said. He says, our world is desperate to see authentic Christians who aren't afraid, who aren't scared, who aren't wearing masks. But Christians who are alive and are unafraid to live out their true selves in Christ. Amen? Amen. That is my prayer for you too. That is my prayer for you here. That is my prayer for you tuning in online. This is what the world is looking for. So if we're going to bring the gospel message to the people who are desperately lost, then we need to go below the surface. We need to address those areas of our lives. And the Apostle Paul has given it to us in the Word of God. As he spoke to the, the believers in the church of Ephesus, so we are spoken to today. God is calling you to live out of your true selves so that you can bring him most glory. Amen, church? Let us pray. Father, I thank you so much for your word today. I thank you, God, because, Lord, what you speak to us truly matters. And I ask, oh God, that you would continue to do a deeper work in us, Lord. So many of us are struggling with the false self and false identity. Lord, I know that I am struggling at times with that myself. Lord, we need you so desperately. Holy Spirit of the living God, come, come and enter into our lives. Go and visit below the surface level, God. Go into those areas of myself, my old self that has yet to be addressed. I ask, oh God, that you would visit those areas and do a deep work, oh God, of not only revealing those, the things to us, but that we would actually surrender to you, God, those things that keep us from maturing spiritually and emotionally. God Almighty, we know we can't do it on our own. We need you, oh God. Would you begin that work? Thank you, God. Thank you so much. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.